Who's wrong and who's wronger? In this corner, followed by Millions James, the exploding unicorn, Breakwell. And in that corner, ignored by Millions Steve Dash, Rinko Levi. Traveller Steve Olivas, Dr. Steve to my academic colleagues, and today we are on the Wrong and Wronger podcast, hunting the elusive unicorn. Behold, as he is splayed out in his natural habitat of YouTube. But James, the unicorn himself, how are you doing tonight, man? Are you as excited about the adventure that is Wrong and Wronger this week as I am? I'm always excited until I hear your voice, and my enthusiasm what? goes from here to here. And I know you can't see that, but that's going from top to bottom. It's definitely going down. Wow. Well, everybody else should be darn excited because you've stumbled upon the podcast where James and I, we argue about stuff that don't mean nothing to nobody, but apparently mean just enough for eight of you to be watching us every week. (laughs) And James... What are we going to be arguing today? This is an intense one. It's when grilling burgers, should you put the cheese on them while they're on the grill or after they come off? Aha. Uh-huh. All right. So unlike whatever we did last week, which I don't remember because the results, <laughs> they, they may vary depending upon your mileage and point of view. I, I don't even know what's going on with the math. But this week, we both have a dog in the fight on this one. Yes, very much so. I am very passionate about this issue. So you are going down. This is this is decided. There's no <laughs> if, ends, or buts. I could roll the dice right now and end this. It's going to be that decisive. I I don't see why you would do that to yourself, James. You will need to leave this with a little shred of dignity. But uh, before we do, and this is a summertime, it is heating up outside, and I know firing up the grills is number one priority on most people's lists, and so this cheese issue has to be resolved tonight. But before we get there, and I do have the Guam quarter of fate, and I do have the broken wrong and wronger mug behind (laughs) me, although it's out of frame, which I guess I should have probably worked out before we started tonight, but... We have to compliment each other, James. We do. And it, is, it is contractually required. <laughs> Unfortunately, we should not have written that in. It is in the co-host agreement. Yes. Am I going first so I, again? Is, 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 you is, always go first uh, because I, it gives me energy to deliver one back to you. I think you're just afraid that someday I'm going to give you a real compliment and you'd feel like a jerk if you didn't give me a real compliment. Oh, that's oh, that's James, your greatest that fear. That fear does not exist. No. <laughs> It's like I, being afraid of UFOs, whatever. I, I would like to compliment you for being a hoarder. Anyone else would have discarded <laughs> that wrong and wronger mug after the 15th time some luggage guy <laughs> smashed it with a sledgehammer. But here you are holding on to it for its non-existent sentimental value. You will not let that thing go. So I guess I guess maybe I should respect that. Maybe you'll never get rid of me. You'll, you'll, you'll hold on to me just as tightly as you hold on to that cup, which is a little disturbing in more than a few ways. But that is my compliment to you. Wow. James, being complimented for my hoarderness is always received graciously by me. (laughs) As you know, like many of your compliments, I have no choice but to make you think you're doing the right thing because you have that fragile male (laughs) ego that's easily wounded. But my compliment back to you, James, is you are here through thick and thin. Like my kids are grown and on their own and my wife is doing her own thing. But you, every week... There's like zombie apocalypse going on in your very home. You've written a book on this topic, and obviously you're able to survive because what do you have going on in the background today? Oh, it's bath night. We had to record half an hour early to accommodate your schedule, which means everything in the house is awake right now. Everything, which shouldn't be a big deal, but I have already been yelled at for trying to record right now amidst the chaos. So and you uh, blame this, me. I, of course I blame you. You are the source of 100% of the problems in my life. Uh, this is This is known. <laughs> But I've never made it into one of your emails, so I find it hard to believe that. That is that's not true. true. I have mentioned the podcast. You were by extension on that podcast, so I think you were mentioned exactly once. And there was another time I had you right at the top of the email, and then I cut it in the final draft. Because let's face it, you were good enough <laughs> oh, for the final no. cut. <laughs> I didn't make it off the cutting room floor. Mm. Ah, the edit bay was merciless that night, <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> But you are you you persevere through any hurricane going on behind you. I I admire your um, <laughs> your fortitude. 
And for such little gain, too. You'd think if I were doing this, there'd be some truly important task I was doing. But no, I'm, it's just to talk <laughs> to you for, for the benefit of those eight people. But those eight people will know whether to put cheese on their burger before or after it comes off the grill. And that is what the Guam Quarter of Fate shall decide for us today. Which of us argues which side and which shall the two sides, which <laughs> I'm getting a little bit tongue tied here. I'm not even drunk yet. What shall the two sides represent for you, James? Uh, heads, uh, cheese on the grill, tails, cheese off the grill. Ooh, this is one you hadn't thought about. Usually you're right there with your I, answer, but this one. I was distracted by the leprechaun thing you got going on over there. talking about <laughs> half the time i just smile and nod all right so heads is put the cheese while the burger is on the grill yes and tails is put the cheese on after you've removed the burger from the grill Mm-hmm. Oh, jesus it's that it's that aggressive validation that i so drink in <laughs> from you <laughs> i don't know what you want from me it's a binary choice just flip the coin <laughs> It's aggressive indifference is what it is. <laughs> All right, the coin is up. And oop, it hit the ceiling, which screwed me up. What? And it actually, on the floor, landed on Guam. You have cheese up the burger after you remove it from the grill. Well, that makes all the sense because if you put it on on the grill, it has two huge disadvantages. First of all, it wastes cheese. The cheese is going to slough off on the corner. It's going to get too hot and melt, and you're going to lose all the corners. That is precious dairy that could be going onto your taste buds, and instead it is sacrificed to the grill gods to cause a future flare-up and possibly ruin a future <laughs> batch of burgers. The second reason is once you put that cheese on on the grill, you lose lose all sense of what the meat looks like. It's completely hidden. And you can't flip it over a second time if it's necessary. It shouldn't be, but we all know stuff happens. Grills aren't perfect. Life happens. There's wind and rain and things. And sometimes you want to give that burger a little bit of extra time so it gets just the right color on the outside. But if you flop a piece of cheese on there for 20 or 30 seconds, you lose all clue of what's going on underneath there. And you could be delivering an undercooked or overcooked burger, and you don't know it. And the single most important element of burger flavor is getting the temperature right. And that is not going to happen if you put the cheese on on there. However, if you take it off and you put the cheese on the burger when it's on like a platter and then you put some tin foil over it to let the own the heat and the steam rise that cheese will still melt but it won't melt to the point where it's you know you know liquid lava it's going to be just the right amount of melt where you get the full exposure of the flavor yet it's not sopping onto the floor or whatever else it's the way that civilized human beings eat and i don't know how you could disagree with that James, the fact that you assume I'm civilized enough to not disagree with that is shocking on its own merit, but I don't want to put some kind of weird MacGyver, a Bill Nye the Science Guy, Rube Goldberg contraption together to figure out how to melt my cheese because we have the ultimate cheese melting tool right before us. It is the grill. And it doesn't take 20 or 30 seconds. And by the way, I'm glad you brought up temperature because that really is the ultimate argument on my side, not yours which is if you wait till after and put the cheese on, like the coldness of the cheese, because you're pulling it right out of the refrigerator, it's going to pull some of the heat out of the burger, and the cheese is never going to melt completely. It's going to be kind of lumpy and congealed. It's going to be gross. You put that cheese on and then just close the grid cover, the grill cover, sorry, for 10 or 12 seconds. That cheese molds itself to your burger. It becomes one with the burger, both in form and in temperature. It is one fluid piece of meat <laughs> and cheese going down your throat. And this is edging into a very strange territory here, but that is the eating experience. We want an explosion of flavor in our mouth, not our tongue to try to work out what is this weird congealed thing. Now, putting it on, and by the way, if you have to put the cheese on when you're not sure if the burger is perfect or not, I say your grill skills need a little bit of <laughs> rudimentary uh, going back to burger cooking 101. There was another word I was trying to pull out there, but I heard your kids <laughs> yelling in the background, and I was distracted by your misery. But, oh, and we have a dog, too! No, I don't hear All a dog. Need... The, I think the dog's on your end. Oh, I was waiting for like a series of oinks and clicks so that uh, like your pigs were communicating with people in sub-Saharan Africa. But anyway, you got to put the burger and the cheese together when it's still in its flavorful state, which is the grill. And anybody with any culinary ability knows exactly what I'm talking about and that I'm correct. Yeah, except the opposite of that. 
I, I, th I figured out your weakness through all of this, and it's it's hygiene. Anytime we argue anything with getting clean, and the voters vote against you, you lost in a landslide last week because you argued that you don't have to wash your legs. But I honestly think whether you argued that you had to wash your legs or you had, we we're going to argue that you don't have to wash your legs, people just pictured your legs, and that's why you lost. That was that was the deal breaker. So I want you now to imagine, dear listener, I want you to imagine Steve heating up this cheese to a billion degrees Celsius and then he goes to bite oh into this juicy God. burger and this liquid molten cheese just goes down his gross face and into his gross goatee <laughs> and it's just everywhere is that what you want I mean that's the kind of thing that what makes you lose doing? your lunch for like the rest of your week it's the ultimate diet plan you can't consume any calories after seeing cheese Steve with all this molten cheese on his face and that's what you're gonna get if you put it on on the grill as for having the cheese be cold you got to have a little bit of self control a little bit of planning. I think it's your grill skills that need the work. You should not be putting cold meat on the grill. You should be putting room temperature meat on the grill. And you should not be putting cold cheese on the grill or off the grill. It should be room temperature cheese. You pull it out half an hour, 45 minutes before Hanks, you know what time dinner is. Because again, you're an adult. And then when the time comes, you've got nice, soft, room temperature cheese that will melt just fine when you pop it on top of that 140 or 145 degree patty. It will melt on its own away from the incinerating heat of the grill. And you will have perfection that will not clobber anyone's face, not even Steve's. I see. Well, I'm glad you strive for accuracy with your billion <laughs> degrees Celsius here. And then you get down to the granular with 140 degrees for your burger. <laughs> You're all over the road, Breakwell. And trying to paint that picture of me, I think, what are you trying to do to our listeners? Like, I could do the same thing and say, imagine James Breakwell eviscerated with I... just a steaming guts all over the table. And he's what? smearing pig feces all over I them. am a That's beautiful his... human being, okay? I am the eye candy of this podcast. That's if I if I blocked out your side of this video, our viewership would double immediately. <laughs> you forget you turned the light on on your end, so there's no way that you can make that argument with a straight face. Uh, well, listen, hygiene aside, there's only one way to eat a burger, and I think we've decided today what way that is. Yes, the way that you were not arguing for. So let's go ahead and roll the dice so that everyone can help me win for a third consecutive week. Everything By is the right way, with the world. Did you see what one of our interns wrote about the washing legs argument from last week? Uh, refresh my memory. She wrote, you were uh, betrayed. I can't remember the verb that she used, but I'll use betrayed. You were betrayed by the Guam quarter of fate. What? That, uh, that was a losing side of the argument. I don't even know where you got that argument from. It was from. all You're over deep, the internet. I don't know. For a internet. guy who tweets 60 times a day, you seem blissfully unaware of what's happening across <laughs> the internet. I don't understand the contrast between those two positions, but it was everywhere there for a couple weeks. And uh, Why was it even a thing? How did it become a thing? Because people were arguing about it. There were, there were a couple people in there who said that they don't wash their legs. I didn't realize it was a thing. I wash my legs because I have excellent hygiene. But listen, we are <laughs> gentlemen. We agreed to terms, and we said no matter what, when we flip that quarter, we will abide by the quarter's wisdom, and that's what we do. When I get it my wit, yeah, it's, it's what it is, Steve. It's what it is. <laughs> Roll the dice, lest ye fall fate to my, or lest ye <laughs> the, fall victim to my fate last The Guam week. quarter of fate would never betray me. It has always been on my side. So if you want to vote for me and grilling, or putting the, the cheese on the burger after it comes off the grill, vote for 20. If you want to vote for Steve and melting your gross cheese on the grill, vote for <laughs> 76. Gross, my friend. And if 76. you want to throw your vote away with a random number, vote for 17. All right. So the real number here is 76 because that's the bicentennial, the centennial. 1776 is when that Declaration of Independence was signed and America became what it is today. Vote 76. You got the 76ers in Philadelphia. Remember Mo Cheeks, Moses Malone, Daryl Dawkins, Dr. J, of course you do. Or you can vote for Breakwell at 20. At, nobody <laughs> cares about the number 20. You can't buy cigarettes when you're 20. You can't buy alcohol. But you can go get killed in the war. So 20 is kind of one of those ages that everybody hates. And 17, same rules apply. You don't have any of the privilege that comes with being 18, but all the responsibility that's saddled with still being in high school. 76 is the way to go. James, I think you see things my way now. I'm pretty compelling, hey? No. Let's go with no. It's <laughs> just a nice, simple no. So I know you got a spiel going. Go ahead and close this. I don't want to derail your train of thoughts. If you get off that page of notes, we'll be here all day.
<laughs> All right, well, that's it. Vote for 76 if you want the right guy to win this week. And until next week, this is Steve Olivas, Dr. Steve, speaking for him, the exploding unicorn, James Breakwell, saying thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and remember, two wrongs can make a right.